What is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? This once again is Scott Porter back for a very special unboxing video. That's right, video, singular. Because today we are dealing with the new Heroclix event series, X-Men Regenesis, Wolverine versus Cyclops. That's right. There was an amazing series that spun out of a crossover event in the mutant universe called X-Men Schism. And in those issues, Wolverine and Cyclops kind of got into a very, I don't know, high schoolish fight with mutant superpowers over what the future of the mutant race should be, what the direction should be. Should it be more militaristic, which was the side that Cyclops was falling on, or more in a nurturing, teaching way, which was the side that Wolverine was falling on, which was a bit of a flip for both of the characters at the time uh, as far as their basic character traits within the world of the X-Men. Um, it was an amazing series for someone who's an X-Men fan like me. It forced a lot of X-Men fans to choose, even though they had been choosing for years who was better. Anyway, it really forced them to take a, a camp, basically. Wolverine is my guy. Wolverine and the X-Men, which was an amazing book that spun out of this, was very cool. Brought in a lot of new uh, mutant characters. Uh, brought some of the old new mutants back. Had a lot of people in different uh, types of roles. You know, Iceman became a teacher, which was not something that he had really done before. Um, the people that went with Wolverine were Shadowcat, Beast, Iceman, and then you had Cyclops living on Utopia with his kind of militaristic ideals that the X-Men needed to no longer be reactionary. They needed to be very, very on the forefront of forcing what the mutant race should do, making sure that they were safe by being aggressive about it. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and just take a look at the outside of the box and see, I don't know, on this close-up cam here, if we can see what we got. We've got, looks like Iceman there, Rogue, Deathbird, who was a Wolverine in the X-Men. Her and Kid Gladiator came into play. This is Wolverine. You got Hope Summers. Colossus. Looks like Bald Colossus after he had uh, absorbed the Gem of Citarac. So he had the Juggernaut powers. And that looks like Moonstar. So that's just at the bottom of this event series box. So those figures in and of themselves look great. I am a huge fan. I believe that Cyclops was right here. I know, I know. I believe that Cyclops is right. I also really believe that this evolution of Cyclops uh, was a good thing. For a long time, people just thought Cyclops was a stick in the mud and didn't like him as a character because they thought he was boring. I loved that this natural evolution of the way he looked at how to save and protect and create a better world for the mutant race was, was this aggressive nature. It felt right to me. Wolverine pulling way back was the jarring one for me, but a lot of people love that move as well. So let me know in the comment section what you thought of those moves and what side you'll be taking. Now, before we start opening everything, I want to explain this event series. It's a three-month series, July, August, and September of 2019. Now, at the beginning of every month, you will go to your venue. You will play your one event for that month. You will open three of the foil packs contained within this little box here, and you will form a 200-point team. You'll play in a Swiss tournament. Whoever wins gets five points towards the event series. Second place gets four points. Th uh, third place gets three points, and other players get one point. In the third month, everybody gets one additional point uh, for places one through six. So at the end of it all, there will be a grand prize. I don't know what that is. I am not sure. But whoever wins the most points for each faction every month will also receive a piece of prize support. Now, at the end of this video, after we open all these packs, we will open some of those prize support pieces as well and give you a quick preview as to what you will be playing for, which I think is very cool and super generous of WizKids to send my way. So that is how the event works. You pick a side, you open packs, you build teams to represent that side, whether it be Cyclops or Wolverine, and in one twist, you actually get to trade one figure a month with another player at that event. So there's a very cool way to build your own thematic teams. If you have somebody who is just a stalwart with Wolverine in this particular thing and you're rep representing Cyclops, you can trade away that piece and you can get somebody that sided with Cyclops back. I think the goal here is to run as close to a theme team as possible, but we'll see how that works out in here. 
Now, what, from, my, from what I know, WizKids did tell me there are alternate paths to get some of this price support as well. So stay tuned to see how that happens. Uh, but there we go. Without further ado, let's just get into this box. There's more on the back here. Um, I don't know if we can really see just a quick glimpse of who's on the back. I hope that we get everybody that's back here in the front. You know, X-Men Regenesis, naming this event X-Men Regenesis as opposed to naming it X-Men Schism actually gives me a little bit of hope that we'll see some of the characters that really came into play after uh, Schism actually happened. I thought at first, you know, looking at the outside of the box, we might only be dealing with Wolverine and Cyclops and those who were closest to them uh, during this event. Um, there's a lot of young X figures that haven't been created yet or that we only have one figure of. You know, we had the uh, School for Xavier, uh, the Xavier's School of Mutants set that came out last year. Um, so we got a lot of the kids from the, you know, Wolverine, Jean Grey School. Uh, we got Brew and Kid Gladiator, Kid Omega, a lot of those characters. So I'm not sure if we'll see them, but hopefully we'll see some other characters that came into play. Seeing Deathbird on the outside of the box gives me a lot of hope. Um, all right, without further ado, we're just going to open these things up. We're going to see what we get in each of them. It's a little notch in the top. Anybody out there looking to uh, have some easy opening access? Ooh. And the first guy we pull is actually Gambit. All right, let's see. Whoa, it looks like there's a switch clicks base here, actually. Um, he's got the yellow base. I'm guessing that's because he sided kind of with Wolverine. So did Rogue in all of this. He looks great with that bow staff. The yellow base is a, uh, pretty, pretty awesome. He's got a double fold card here. So let's take a look at the front and see what it says. It says, I stand with Wolverine. At the beginning of the game, if Gambit is a part of the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning themed team, replace this character card with 7.1 character card. With a 7.1 character card, which I'm guessing is inside here. Um, wow. Okay. That's awesome. We'll have to see what the differences are between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this back to the front. Okay, so when you're just playing him normally, without the I Stand with Wolverine trait. You've got a trait, Thieves Guild Training, Sidestep and Stealth. Special attack power, let me show you a little trick. Free, choose one, Energy Explosion and Force Blast or Quake, and Giant Reach of two, Gambit can use the chosen effects this turn. And then on the inside, with his 7.1 version, he's got Thieves Guild as a trait, and he's got, let me show you a little trick, Energy Explosion, Force Blast, Quake, and Giant Reach of Two. So he doesn't have to choose between Force Blast or Quake, which gives him a little bit of a bonus. You also have the dial, I believe, staying the exact same. That's a six-click long dial for Gambit. Pretty powerful there. That's really cool. But the dial stays the same no matter what. Both have the exact same spaces where special powers are. Both have the exact same standard powers as well. So that is very cool. He has the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, Marauders, X-Men, and Spy keywords. He comes in at either 80 points or 50 points. And there we go. That is a good start to this uh, event series box. I wouldn't mind pulling him. He's got five range, two targets. OK, awesome. Let's see who's next. Now, the only way to get these guys is to play in this event series once a month. Oh, we got Storm. Now, Storm sided with Cyclops. She's got a uh, pretty blue base here. But again, the switch clicks aspect of it is very interesting. And wondering if they're going to come into play uh, having the switch clicks bases here. She looks great. She comes in at 70 or 50 points. Love the sculpt. Go ahead and take a look here. She's got the wind at my command, force blast, and sidestep. She's got call down the lightning, free. Make a range attack targeting a single opposing character that storm knocked back this turn. That character must still be within range and line of fire. But on the inside, she has a different 
card here. Cyclops was right. At the beginning of the game, if Storm is part of a Utopia-themed team, replace this character with their 4.1 character card. The Wind at my command, free, choose one, Force Blast or Sidestep. Storm can use the chosen power until the end of your turn. Call down the lightning. Seems like it's the same uh, both ways. What really seems to have changed is her trait. On this, she has to choose Force Blast or Sidestep. But on the inside, she gets to use both of them during the same turn. So there you go. Take a look at the back of the card. The dial, like I said, is the same for both of them. I'm really liking the way that they have adjusted um, these traits or powers to allow for just a little bonus if you're running a theme team. Oh, I guess I should tell you her keywords. Utopia, Wakanda, X-Men, and Deity. So we're going to be dealing with Utopia, and we're going to be dealing with Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, which is probably the longest uh, <laughs> theme team or, or keyword you could possibly have. The Jean Grey School of Higher Learning keyword. The next guy we pull is Magneto. Woo! All right, we've got some heavy hitters in this set. Take a look at his dial there. Now the events of Regenesis led into Avengers vs. X-Men as well, with everybody being broken apart, with the Avengers showing up at Utopia, with Cyclops just refusing to give up Hope Summers. That was a very in-character thing for the new Cyclops to do. Um, and then Avengers vs. X-Men happened, and he ends up with the Phoenix Force. Uh, this Magneto has both the Brotherhood and the X-Men team abilities. He comes in at 120 or 60 points. Let's take a look at his card here. He's got Cyclops was right. Yes, I like that one. He's got uh, a trait that says Cyclops was right at the beginning of the game. If Magneto is part of a Utopia-themed team, replace this character with 8.1. He has another trait, controlling the magnetic fields, opposing characters within two squares and line of fire. Consider Magneto adjacent for movement purposes. A special defense power, magnetic forces to repel and attract energy shield deflection, willpower barrier is free, but only to generate one blocking terrain marker. When moving, opposing characters adjacent to Magneto's barrier marker must roll for breakaway if they don't already need to. We flip the card open and see what his little bonus for his point one is. And it looks like it happens in the trait there. Controlling the magnetic fields, opposing characters within four squares and line of fire. Consider Magneto adjacent for movement purposes. On the front, when he's not a part of that Utopia theme team, it says two squares, I believe. So there you go. There's his dial. Remember, the dial's the same no matter what version you're using, the non-theme team or the theme team with the Cyclops is right. There you go. Yeah, it looks like that's where the difference is. So just little tweaks. There's no increase in point value. You just get a true on-dial bonus for staying a theme team, which is that, that trading aspect is going to come into play. I like what they're doing here a lot. Seems like we're going back and forth with uh, sides chosen. Oh, here's the man, Beast. Woo! I love this Beast sculpt, guys. This is, wait till I get him down here for you. Look at that. Backflip beast. I love it. He's got his goggles on. Oh, that's great. That is awesome. Comes in at 70 or 40 points. Okay. He looks great. I love the backflip beast there. Uh, he'll go with Gambit. We'll take a look at his card real quick. Beast. I stand with Wolverine. He has the Avengers, Defenders, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Men, Animal, and Scientist keywords. He's got some improved movement there, elevated and hindering terrain. Has that trait that if he is part of a Jean Grey School for Higher Learning theme team, he can use his 5.1 card. He also has a trait letting the beast out. Choose one, Outwit or Battle Fury, and modify beast's combat values by plus one. Beast can use the chosen effects until your next turn. Let's see what his point one card does differently. Letting the beast out, choose one outwit and perplex or battle fury. And willpower and, mod uh, willpower and modify beast's combat values by plus one. Beast can use the chosen effects until your next turn. So he gains the ability to also use perplex instead of just outwit. There's his dial. Man, seven clicks long. These are pretty beefy dials actually uh, going against the grain of what the trend of hero clicks was for a little while there. Smaller, more very specific utility dials. Uh, this is cool, man. I am, I am super excited. 
What it allows you to do is a game that I used to do all the time. I've been reading X-Men for a very, very long time. The first issue I ever read was, was the death of Harry Leland, uh, who was like the Black Rook, or I can't remember exactly, one of the members of the Hellfire team. And over the years, I've read so many iterations of the X-Men, so many different teams. And I've always in my head wanted, created the, wanted to create the best X team, the best X-Men team you would need. Uh, you would need somebody who's mobile. You would need energy blast. You would need psychic powers. You would need a brawler. You would need somebody to do dirty work and then a couple of support guys back at uh, the mansion. So I used to always build my team up. And I feel like I'm going to be able to act like I'm a kid again. And with these figures, plus what we've gotten in the past couple of years, be able to really, really hone my favorite X team. This is, I'm, I'm giddy with excitement here as an X fan. All right, moving on. Let's see, who else do we have? <sighs> Danger. Danger spun out of Astonishing X-Men. She became a very big part of Utopia, uh, a very strong ally of Scott's in that particular sense. She comes in at 120 or 60 points. She's got that blue switch cooks base as well. Let's take a look at her card here. She's got Shire, Utopia, X-Men, and Robot keywords. Set number 16. Cyclops was right. If she's on a Utopia theme team, you can use the point one card for her. She also has Utopia defense systems free. Choose a standard speed or attack power printed on this card that Danger can't already use. Danger can use the chosen power until your next turn. All right, interesting. Let's see how it changes on the inside. Choose a standard power printed on this card that Danger can't already use. Danger can use the chosen power until your next turn. So printed on this card versus standard speed or attack power. So it changes so that she can use any standard power printed on this card, not just the standard uh, ones from the attack or speed pools. Wow, okay, there you go, that's the bonus. Oh, sorry, I guess I should show you what her dial looks like there. Just a rainbow. Just almost every power you could hope for. Um, Danger was huge on Utopia. Uh, everything that she was able to do to keep that island safe, to really kind of be um, the AI of the entire island was really cool. That was a great evolution for danger. All right, moving on. Man, I don't know how, how many packs are actually in here. It doesn't say on the outside of the box anywhere. Let's see, does it say? No? All right, so we'll just keep on opening until we're done, <laughs> until we're just empty. Um, I don't know how duplication happens in these boxes. I don't know if we're going to have just a ton of, of different... Uh, or duplicates or anything like that. I'm just, or if we just get one of each in the box. I, I don't, I don't know. And then it gets divvied up that way. Um, all right. Let's see. Moving on. A couple of the most powerful ladies in the X-Men universe. We've got Rachel Summers here. She ended up at the Jean Grey School. She looks great. Got that fire trail coming out the back there. That newer costume comes in at 100 or 50 points. Rachel Summers, we'll take a look at her card real quick. She has a ton of keywords. She's got Excalibur, Dream Gray School for Higher Learning, Phoenix Force, Star Jammers, X Men, and Future. Ooh, the Star Jammers, that is interesting. You know, Havoc and Polaris were on the Star Jammers, uh, and at the end of that, coming into Regenesis, they returned and were uh, told about. Jamie's X Factor investigations team, and that's when Havoc and Polaris kind of returned to the fold as well here on Earth with X Factor. So, ooh, can we see a Havoc, please? Can we see? I was always a fan of Havoc growing up. I wasn't a fan of Cyclops. Um, but as I grew older and I started to realize everything that Cyclops had gone through, everything Cyclops had lost, I started to have a huge amount of respect for him. I think he gets a bad rap. I think Cyclops really does. You lose your wife. You have a fake wife, you lose her. You get your wife back, you lose her again. You lose your son to a techno-organic virus. You lose your mentor. You lose your father very young, get him back, and then he goes back off into, state, uh, into space. I mean, there's just so many things that Scott has lost and still was able to keep it together and, and really be 
you know, the vanguard for the mutant race for a very long time. A great tactician, a wonderful leader on the field. Uh, even if you disagree with what he does, he, everything he ever did was to keep them together. He wasn't somebody who was out there just fighting for himself, somebody off just having adventures because he couldn't, you know, quench his thirst or figure out where his history was. He didn't abandon his fellow X-Men. So I have a lot of respect for Cyclops. Uh, sorry for the tangent. I know we're looking at Rachel Summers. We'll get back to her card, but uh, I just hope that maybe Havoc and Polaris are coming back. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Havoc as well. So once we got that Starjammers keyword, it gives me hope uh, that we'll be seeing more than just uh, two groups of X-Men, the Utopia and Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. All right, let's go. I stand with Wolverine. If she is part of the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning theme team, you can use the 9.1 character card. She has a trait, Unleash the Power of the Phoenix Telekinesis. Telekinesis as free, but only if Rachel Summers was targeted with an attack since her last turn. And a special defense power, telekinetic shield, energy shield deflection, toughness, and willpower. Okay, look at the inside here. The change is that she gets telekinesis as free. She doesn't have to have been a target of an attack. There's her dial, seven clicks long. Again, good combat values, three damage on five out of her seven clicks. Um, yes, I am very excited about this Rachel Summers. I love the old one that had just a ton of range combat expert, like one of the original Rachel Summers, uh, but this one is a, is a great addition, and she's got some hypersonic speed. I mean, she's going to be nasty. Now, on to somebody that I never have truly gotten on board with being an X-Man. I don't know if it was just because, you know, my dude Cyclops made some questionable decisions with her, but we have Emma Frost here. She looks great. She comes in at 90 or 60 points. Take a look at her card very quickly here. Of course, you know she stood with Cyclops. So if she's a part of a Utopia theme team, you get to use her 6.1 card. She has the Hellfire Club, Hellions, Utopia, and X-Men keywords. She has a trait dominating or unbreakable at a moment's notice. Protected against penetrating and psychic blast. Free, choose one, invulnerability or penetrating psychic blast. Emma Frost can use the chosen power until your next turn. If you're using her as a part of Utopia theme team, she has invulnerability, penetrating psychic blast, protected penetrating psychic blast. Hmm. So if you use her as the theme team, she gets to use both, both invulnerability and penetrating psychic blast. She does not have to choose one. See her dial there? Eight clicks long. Woo! She's definitely getting her diamond form <laughs> dial length there. Man, eight clicks long. That is nuts. Eight clicks for Emma Frost. Yeesh! And she's got a penetrating psychic blast. And she's got a vulnerability. Um, yeah, she's a bit of a beast. All right, next one. Oh, we did get our first duplicate. It's Beast. So we've seen him already. I'm going to set him off to the side. So there will be duplicates. So there will be more than one of each character. So fear not. If somebody pulls your favorite character, you've still got a chance of getting them as well. Oh, speaking of favorite characters, here we go. Iceman, Bobby Drake. He is my favorite X-Man of all time. I just love the idea of people who are almost scared of how powerful they can be. He uses humor a lot. He never really felt like he could truly be himself. And that was either on the battlefield or off the battlefield. So he, he masked a lot of his pain, a lot of uh, the emotion he was going through outside of the battlefield and jokes. And then when he's on the field, he's just a lot of times just very scared to cut loose. But he is an Omega level mutant. And we've seen that before in the books at various times. I just love the idea of, of his character. Iceman has been my favorite for a very, very long time and still is to this day. So 80 or 50 points. He did go with uh, Wolverine. As a matter of fact, he's the one that fired up the jet to get Wolverine off of Utopia. Uh, fired up the Blackbird. Here we go. Got Iceman. Set number 13. He's got Champions, Defenders, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, and X-Men keywords. I stand with Wolverine. If he's a part of a Jean Grey School for Higher Learning theme team, you can use his 13.1 card. Watch your step, it's slippery. 
is another trait. When Iceman hits one or, most, uh, one or more opposing characters with a range attack, choose one for all hit characters, speed minus two or attack minus one. Hit characters modify the chosen combat value until your next turn. He also has a special defense power. My Ice Slide will melt eventually. Barrier, toughness, willpower. Whenever Iceman moves, after resolution of each move, you may immediately place a blocking terrain marker in a square he moved through. Remove that marker at the beginning of your next turn, even if this is lost. I love the ability to just leave a little bit of blocking terrain behind to cover yourself. His watch your step at slippery changes. When Iceman hits one or more opposing characters with a range attack, hit characters modify their speed negative two and attack negative one until your next turn. How does it change? Hmm. Modify the... What is the difference here? All right, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've been doing a good job of uh, kind of seeing which, what the change is, but when Iceman hit one more opposing characters range attack, hit characters, modify their speed, negative two, and attack negative one until your next turn. Choose one for all hit characters. Hit characters modify the chosen. Oh, so it's not choosing one. So you don't choose the negative two for speed or the negative one for attack. You just nail them with both of those things. Whew, my brain, guys, sorry. Uh, wow. That's like an uber kind of stat debuff. I'm into it. Um, yes, my favorite guy is in the set. I hope that I can pull him. I, man, I don't want to side with Wolverine, but the Iceman's over there. I'm going to have to play at multiple venues. That's just how that's going to have to go. All right. Oh, we get the man himself for Wolverine's side. We get Wolverine here. Take a look at him. I like the sculpt. I like the action in this sculpt. You know, a lot of times Wolverine uh, in old sets was just kind of standing on the ground with his claws popped. I like this movement. The lunging, the jumping, the claws up in the air there. Uh, I like how that looks. Of course, he stands with Wolverine. He's got the Avengers, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, Weapon X, X-Force, and X-Men keywords. I stand with Wolverine. He can use his 1.1 character card if he's a part of a theme team. He's got a healing factor. Toughness. When Wolverine clears one or more action tokens, heal him one click. Has a special defense power, Weapon X, Reject, Stop, Combat Reflexes, and Super Senses. Take a look at that stop click in there. Got it twice, actually. His change is a part of his healing factor trait, toughness, free, heal Wolverine, one click. So he's just healing one click for free. He doesn't have to clear action tokens like he does if he's not a part of a theme team. Man, is he going to be annoying. Eight clicks long, and if he's a part of a theme team, he's just healing for free every round a click. Oh, no. Ugh. Ugh. See, that's... A lot of my problem with Wolverine is the fact that he's just a character that a lot of, if you're a lazy rider, can just throw him into any situation because he can't be killed, and then he'll just obliterate whatever you need obliterated. He's just uh, sometimes turns into a bit of a, uh, you know, just kind of plot mechanism. Oh, we need this giant helicarrier brought down? That's fine. Yeah, just throw Wolverine on there. Nobody can kill him. It doesn't matter how many millions of bullets you put into him. No one's going to tear him apart. I thought Wolverine was most interesting after Magneto pulled all the metal out of his body. That made Wolverine very, very interesting to me. Uh, he was breakable, at least at that point. Uh, with his adamantium skeleton, he's just unbreakable. And I don't know. He never had to deal with... He, he's, he has a very rich history. I will give him that. But he never had to deal with his own mortality. And I understand that that's a different, interesting story take. But uh, for me, I was never a Wolverine guy. I never have been. Um, I'm not sure I ever fully will be. Uh, but this particular book, Wolverine and the X-Men, actually made me like him a little bit more. It actually improved both characters for me uh, in this instance. Oh, we got another one for Wolverine's side. And the next character here is Shadowcat, Kitty Pride. That was one of the more heartbreaking choices that was made. Colossus decided to stay with Cyclops. Kitty decided to go with Wolverine. There was really no other choice for her. I like how she's halfway in the ground. She's got Lockheed on her shoulder, just like always. She comes in at 60 or 40 points, uh, depending on what starting line you want to use her on. 
Take a look at her card here. She's got Excalibur, Guardians of the Galaxy, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Men Keywords. It's interesting that she's got Guardians of the Galaxy. They're not staying period specific for the keywords. They're actually just kind of giving a catch-all to all of these characters. So it's not just about the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning and Utopia Keywords. These characters are getting all of them. You know, she'll eventually go on to be a part of the Guardians much later after this storyline. I stand with Wolverine trait. She also has Lockheed free once per game. Generate a Lockheed bystander. And moving through the ground is a special movement power, sidestep, and stealth. How does she change if you play her on a theme team? Once per game, generate a Lockheed bystander. This game, that bystander is autonomous, actually. So that means that Lockheed's actions would not count against your action total for the round. That's awesome. That's a big bonus, actually. You've got running shot and energy explosion. Energy shield deflection. Remember, the dials stay the same. It's only the card that changes. So there we go. Very, very interesting. But when she left, Colossus decided to stay. And Colossus decided to stay behind. And they're kind of like the Romeo and Juliet of the uh, X-Men world. They want to be together. They long to be together so much. But something gets in the way almost every single time. And at that point, Colossus had absorbed the uh, gem of Sidorak. He had Sidorak in his body, and he was very dangerous because of it. He was actually also bald because of it. I'm not sure. I guess that just made him bald for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if when he was wearing He was basically the Juggernaut and Colossus together. I don't know if the helmet made him lose his hair. But uh, wasn't my favorite look for Colossus, but he decided that he, he could not go to a school. He said, Wolverine is starting a school, and I, I'm too dangerous. You can't take me around a lot of children. It's just not going to be good for anybody. And he thought he had to exile himself on this island. And Shadowcat could not stay. She just did not believe in that. She has always been a teacher. She has always been a student of Professor X, like the teacher's pet, and then a teacher in her own right. And so they made the decisions that were right for them, and it ended up splitting them apart, uh, which was a little bit heartbreaking. Uh, we pulled a storm here. So there's two storms that we've seen. Let's see. Still haven't seen Cyclops himself yet. Uh, ooh, here we have Hope Summers. Now, Hope was a big part of this whole thing because Hope wanted to fight. Hope wanted to be on the front line for the X-Men. She wanted to lead a new vanguard of new young mutants who wanted to be on the battlefield. They wanted to be fighting. And um, Cyclops allowed them to. As a matter of fact, the, the moment that changed everything was Cyclops allowing or, or not telling one of his young students to not kill Hellfire guards uh, in a battle that they were clearly losing against the... Uh, the big enemy during Schism was a bunch of young, snot-nosed punks who had taken over the Hellfire Club. Uh, Cade Kilgore and his little band of rugrats. Ugh, I couldn't stand them. Um, but there was a scene in a building. The X-Men were dead to rights, and one of the students actually killed some Hellfire guards. And Wolverine, who has been killing people his whole life, all of a sudden was very upset about that, uh, that she had done that. And uh, Cyclops said, look, it was a means to an end. We have to protect our race. After the mutants disappeared, after Scarlet Witch snapped her fingers, and then they got Hope Summers, who is right here, and she looks great, by the way. Um, Cyclops had just changed his worldview for the mutants. They, they had, not, no pun no intended, uh, they had hope again. And he was going to fight and do anything necessary. And if that meant killing some of those who would oppose them, Cyclops was no longer against that. And that's what really started this whole entire fight between Cyclops and Wolverine. All right, let's take a look at Hope's card here. We've got Generation X, Phoenix Force, Utopia, X-Men, and Future Keywords. She's got the Cyclops was right trait. She's got Mutant Messiah. Choose an adjacent character. If the chosen character is adjacent until your next turn, Hope Summers can use the standard attack and damage powers that character can use. Her powers can change if the chosen character's dial is clicked. Ooh. All right, her change on the inside, the change in the wording of Mutant Messiah is choose an adjacent character. If the chosen character is adjacent until your next turn, Hope Summers can use the standard powers that character can use. Her powers can change if the chosen character's dial is clicked. Man. So she can use all the powers, not just the attack and damage powers. She can use all four of the powers of the adjacent piece. That is the change to her wording. There is her dial. There you go. Man, 
Woo. These little shifts, if you're running a theme team, are huge. And side note, you can use these .1 cards outside of this event. It is a part of their card. It does not say that's only going to affect the Regenesis event series. You can use them anywhere, anytime. So you're getting these bonuses not only within the confines of this event, but you can use them in regular tournaments outside of this as well. At least that is my understanding. If you guys disagree with me, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Let's see, we've got whew, two, four, six, eight, ten more packs. All right, so we get 20 packs in a box. Okay, now we know the answer to that. All right, let's see who we get out of these last 10 packs here. Ah. Oh, there he is, Colossus himself. Woo. And yes, he is bald. They, he definitely is bald. Big, bald, and beautiful in this particular <laughs> set. He comes in at 100 or 70 points. I thought he might come in with a higher point total. But if the point of this is to build a 200-point team and play uh, a round-robin tournament on 2x2 two two maps, I don't see how you could actually make Colossus more. So his dial might actually be affected by the point total for the event itself. Let's take a look at his card. Colossus has Excalibur, Utopia, X-Men, and Armor keywords. He has a Cyclops' was right trait. He has a trait, I shall hold them for you, comrade, plasticity. When Colossus is not holding an object and hits an opposing character with a close attack, after resolutions, choose one, attack minus one, or defense minus one. A hit character modifies the chosen combat value by negative one until your next turn. His change is that after a close attack, after resolutions, a hit character modifies their attack and defense by negative one until your next turn. You do not have to choose. There is his dial, some invincibility, some invulnerability. He is a bit of a beast. He also has improved movement, hindering terrain, so that will not stop him from charging you. And there you can see Colossus with the Juggernaut helmet on. Uh, Peter Piotr looking very, very nice. Um, the baldness is, it, it, it's a little jarring for me, but, uh, but I'll get over it, folks. I will get past it. All right, let's see <clears throat> who is next. Oh, Angel. All right. So Angel, without his blue skin, but still with his metal wings. You can take a look at that there. Let's see. He comes in at 70 points or 40 points there. Oh, yeah. Looking good, looking good. Again, without his blue skin, but still with his metallic wings. He had some secondary evolution stuff going on at that point. Uh, let's take a look at his card here. Defenders, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Men, and Deity. Ooh, dealing with the apocalypse stuff there. I stand with Wolverine. Trait, he has Return to Earth, a special movement power. Charge, when Angel uses it, you may choose to not have his speed. If you do, he cannot carry anyone. Do you not know an angel when you see one? He has super senses and willpower. That is a special defense power. Let's look at the inside of the card here. Return to Earth, charge, but do not have speed. So he, can, he gains the ability to have a passenger, does not have to have his speed for charge. Oh my gosh. He has 12 movement. He's got 12 movement charge, and he can carry somebody if he carries with somebody. Of course, you, you're going to take that negative two. But that's 10 movement charge carrying somebody? 10 movement charge carrying somebody. The swing on this guy is awesome. He can get some people in great position. Uh, wow. I am actually very impressed with an angel. It is not often that you are impressed with, uh, that impressed with an angel. Actually, they've done, they've done a pretty good job. Um, there was a super rare a couple of years ago that was really nasty, really dangerous. Um, they've actually done a really good job improving upon Angel. If you remember when he first came out, he just like would carry a rocket launcher around. I never understood how that worked because obviously when you fire off the rocket launcher and you're flying in the air, you're just going to propel yourself backwards in a huge way. He wasn't really useful at first. We pulled another Magneto. 
We'll set him to the side. We've seen him already. Still have not seen Cyclops. Still have not seen Deathbird. Uh, haven't seen Moonstar yet. Oh, here we go. We've seen Cyclops now. Um, their battle on the beach, you know, Wolverine and Cyclops when they were arguing about everything, eventually, the reason I called it a high school argument is eventually it gets to the fact where Scott just starts yelling, she never loved you, and Wolverine starts yelling, who do you think she would love you now with the Cyclops you are? And Cyclops is like, shut up! And meanwhile, there's this, the largest sentinel ever created of all time, just like charging towards them, destroying tankers and yachts along the way in the middle of the ocean as it charges outside of San Francisco onto Utopia. And yet, they're just arguing about uh, Jean Grey and who she would have loved more. Um, that moment was a little silly to me, but what they were fighting for actually was very interesting to me. Um, this uh, Cyclops is very squatty. He's, he's definitely in a unique squatty position here. Uh, I voice Cyclops in a bunch of different properties, uh, video games or cartoons. And it's funny because when you voice a character and they tell you, okay, make your attack sound, you know, you're throwing a punch, you go, but with Cyclops, he's just shooting a laser out of his eyes. And they're like, Make the effort sound for Cyclops shooting a laser out of his eyes. How do you think that sounds? And I go, I don't know what that sounds like, guys. I, I've never really known. It's more of, I guess, like a, maybe a focus sound. So that's what we end up going with. I don't know. Uh, in this particular pose, though, it looks like Cyclops is making this sound. I, I don't know. That's what I thought when I looked at it. Uh, he looks like he's really forcing that optic blast out there. Um, all right, let's see. Cyclops has Utopia. He has X-Men. He has politician keywords. That's interesting. At the very beginning of Schism, they're actually going to the UN uh, to talk about decommissioning all the Sentinel programs worldwide. Wolverine is his bodyguard and Cyclops. Maybe that's where that politician keyword comes from. Mutants united in Utopia. Leadership. Free. If another friendly character hits hit an opposing character this turn, heal Cyclops two clicks. What? Ooh, I like that. Also, a special defense power to save mutants. We have to save the rest of the world to stop energy shield deflection and super senses. He has a stop click. It's a very unique Cyclops dial there. Two stop clicks. Oh, Wolverine gets two stop clicks as well, so definitely mirroring uh, what Wolverine does. But Let's see if he's not on a theme team, because that, that first page right there with him recovering two clicks or healing two clicks, which is crazy, um, is if he is part of a theme team. If he's not part of a theme team, he has the Cyclops was right trait. If another friendly character hits an opposing character this turn, heal Cyclops only one click, and then everything else is the same. So if he's part of a theme team, if a friendly character hits an opponent, you get two clicks healed. Uh, if you're not part of a theme team, you only get one click back. That makes this Cyclops really, really, really dangerous. He's got penetrating psychic blast at the top of his dial. He's got three damage. But the fact that Cyclops is getting clicks back allows him to stand up to Wolverine uh, in this particular event. All right. We're down to seven packs, I think. I think we pulled... Quite a few of the characters here. Here's a second Cyclops. We couldn't find him for a while, and now we found two of them in a row. I'm guessing we'll probably have two Wolverines in here, too, at some point. Here's another Magneto. Keep on rolling. I'm hoping for, for Danny or Deathbird. I saw them on the outside of the box, so I think they're definitely very interesting characters. Uh, another Shadow Cat. Let's see... Anyone new? Anything new? Anything new? A new? Another Emma? Okay. We've got three more packs to hopefully get one or two or three more new figures. Well, another Wolverine. I was right. So a couple of Cyclops, a couple of Wolverines. Give me one new figure before we end this thing out here. Another Gambit. All right. Last chance. Uh, it would be weird if we don't get a complete set in the box, but we'll see what happens here. Nope, another Gambit. So there we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten duplicates. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 24 packs in a box. I was, mis I was mistaken earlier when I said there were 20 packs. There are 24 packs in the box. Out of that, we got 14 uh, new characters, and we got 10 duplicates. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 of each side, though. So we did get 12 on Wolverine's side and 12 on Cyclops' side. So there you go, folks. That's what we got out of that uh, box there. You can count on this kind of thing happening maybe at the events that you play in. Now, the cool thing is trading. Trading is available. So if you do pull duplicates of one of these figures out of your three foil packs, chances are somebody else didn't get that and somebody else would want to have that figure. Because what happens is, as you go forward in the event series, you get to bring the figures you pulled the prior month with you and you can use them to build your teams further with your three new figures that you get. So by the end, you've got nine figures if you haven't won prizes. You've got nine figures to build your final team with in that last month, which allows you to play for the grand prize. All right. Now, earlier I said that not only would we do the blind box openings, but we would also go ahead and look at this event series prize support. Um, we've got eight figures here, and this is where things get really, really cool, I guess. I have purposely not looked at these. Um, I got the box, I was so tempted, but I also got an email letting me know that these guys were coming, so I chose not to look at them. Uh, I guess we'll start here with Magneto. Now if you notice, these guys do not have the colored bases of, you know, choosing a side. So we're going to start with the Magneto here. I don't know when these prizes come out. I don't know if they're, if they're specifically slotted for certain months. I don't know which ones are grand prizes. I just know that these guys are prize support for this thing. So here's the Magneto. You can see him against the one that, uh, that you can pull out of the box here. Similar sculpt. He just doesn't have his helmet. I wonder where his helmet went there. The uh, magnetic energy has changed from purple to blue. So there you go. Take a look at that Magneto there. Now, let's take a look at his card. And you can see, let's take a look at rarity here. We have common and rare rarities, it looks like. There's silver bases and there's white bases. So you can see here, these are the only two types of rarity that we have in the actual packs we pull. So rare and common. Uh, I think a lot of those duplicates that we pulled were actually common pieces. All right, let's take a look at Magneto's card. It is not a fold-out. Just your standard card. Brotherhood of Mutants, Hellfire Club, Unbelievable Destructive Force, Pulse Wave, Telekinesis, and Improved Targeting, Ignoring Blocking Terrain. Look at the back there, look at his dial. That is a beast. That is a beastly dial. Uh, very cool. He comes in at 125 points, so we'll put him in the middle there. Okay, next, let's see. We've got a Wolverine side guy, and this one is Gambit. Um, let's see what's different about him, though. Oh, Hellbound. Oh, I think this is Gambit as death. Uh, yeah, I think so. There's Gambit during his time as death. You know, I thought his bow staff looked a little bit like a scythe, <laughs> and now definitely it makes sense. Look at that. Oh, that's wicked. That's rad. I know it's just a little bit of a different paint job, but uh, now I should say that these, these guys... They have a switch click base as well, it looks like. He just comes right off the base. So, um, you know, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, <laughs> comes right off the base. So he has a switch, switch click style as well. I'm not sure why. Um, we haven't seen switch clicks in a while, but uh, they have made a resurgence in this particular event series. Let's take a look at this card here. Gambit, Marauders, Monster Keywords. Avatar of Death, Gambit deals penetrating damage, period. Noxious Gas, Poison, when Gambit uses it, opposing characters within three squares are considered adjacent. Special Attack Power, you got 
to take what's coming to you home and capacitate when Gambit uses it as a close action. Hit characters are given two action tokens instead of instead and gain immobile until your next turn. Holy what? Oh my gosh, that Uber in cap is nonsense. And he's got three clicks of it with 11 attack at the top of the dial. Oh, man. But he also has two lightning bolts and six range. So, man, he's dangerous both at range and up close. That's awesome. Gambit is death. I'm into it. Prizes so far are looking, looking nice. Oh, I was looking for Moonstar, hoping to get her. And it looks like she is uh, part of this uh, prize support pack here. I told you some of the new mutants came back. Cannonball came back around uh, at the Jean Grey school. Here's Moonstar. I feel like we've seen a lot of Moonstar. She's usually kind of looking the same. She comes in at 65 points. Oh, I should tell you Gambit comes in at 100 points. Let's take a look at her card real quickly here. She's got Asgardian, New Mutants, X-Men, Mystical, Brightwind, Charge, and Flight. She's got psionic arrows, incapacitate. When, Mon when Moonstar uses it, also deal her damage value divided among hit targets. Okay, so she's doing full damage in cap, and it can be divided amongst multiple targets. Special defense power, and she has indomitable there. Chosen for, ba chosen for battle, stop. Invulnerability, super senses. For the rest of the game, Moonstar can't be healed past this click. So, there you go. She still has a couple of clicks past that there. Not a bad dial. Pretty strong Moonstar. And she only comes in at 65 points. So I think you get a lot for what she actually is. Okay, let's see. Who is next? Um, Cyclops. There's a special Cyclops here. Oh, you know, I was wondering where Magneto's helmet went. And uh, I think this came out of Astonishing X-Men, but there's Cyclops with, uh, with Magneto's helmet on. So that's, <laughs> that's awesome. So you've got a Magneto with no helmet, and you've got Cyclops wearing Magneto's helmet. That's awesome. He comes in at 100 or 70 points, has the X-Men team ability, and he's indomitable. Take a look at his card real quick. Just one keyword, X-Men. Assembling an interdimensional X society. During force construction, characters with keywords that begin with X gain the X-Men keyword if they don't already have it. That's awesome. X-Force. X-Factor, they're all X-Men. Magneto's mental shielding helmets, protected against mind control, outwit, so penetrating psychic blast. Man, that is great. I wish every Magneto had that. Why does every Magneto not have that if Cyclops is getting it by wearing the helmet? We can still do this if you all listen to me. Stop. When this click is first revealed, after resolutions, heal Cyclops a number of clicks equal to the number of other friendly characters on your force what? Whoa! It says first revealed though, so maybe it's only that, that, that one time. But man, if you go to KO Cyclops and you still got five guys on his team, if you still got five people on your force that share that keyword with him, you're getting five clicks back? Man, you got to deal with Cyclops last, which means you're leaving this high damage output figure on the board who you can't outwit in the first place. Uh, that energy shield deflection is going to be a big pain at range since you can't outwit it. Uh, very cool. Okay, we've got four more left. Let's see who we have next. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think this is the big dog here. I think we've got Archangel, but I think this might be the Death Archangel as well um, from the Uncanny X-Force run there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. He's got six range, two targets, comes at 100 or 75 points. Okay, take a look at his card here. Archangel has X-Force, X-Factor, X-Men, Monster Keywords, Angel of Death, Steel Energy, but with close or range attacks. When Archangel uses it and heals, modify his defense by plus one until your next turn. He's got hypersonic speed here, it looks like. Four clicks of it, 12 movement, six range. Whew, man. That is a nice dial. 
And he's, remember, stealing energy with every successful attack. Doesn't matter if it's at range or up close. He's got indomitable. Uh, he is outwittable, so I think he is easily, uh, you can easily take him down, but you can't let him just fly around on the board and, uh, and get health back because he could, he could cause some serious, serious problems. And that 12 movement with hypersonic speed and he's flying, whew, it's going to be tough to catch. But once you do, you can actually get him down pretty easily. All right, we've got another version of Wolverine here uh, to match that Cyclops with the helmet. Okay. Oh, and you know what? I think these are his, uh, his heat claws uh, that have more recently been introduced. Um, let's see. Yeah, you can see they're kind of translucent yellow there. They look cool. He comes in at uh, 100 or 70 points. Take a look at his card here. He's got Weapon X, X-Factor, X-Men, Keywords, Weapon X, Free, make a close attack, but only to target an adjacent opposing character that hit Wolverine with an attack since your last turn. When a friendly character is KO'd after resolutions, remove an action token from Wolverine. Mutant healing factor on overdrive, stop. Regeneration as free. Regeneration heals one less on a stop click. But that stop doesn't only say it happens once, it happens every single time you get to the end of that dial there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how you KO this guy. Woo! Yeah. You've got to make sure you can double tap him or else he's just not going to leave the board. Solid, solid, solid dial there. Okay, we've got two more pieces of Prive Support here. And I saved them for last because I saw that they had a blue and a yellow base. So you have prize support here that actually does play, I think, with these theme teams. Uh, remember, none of these other prizes do. They don't have those Utopia or Jean Grey School of Higher Learning uh, keywords. But I feel like these two guys are connected. I'm going to open them together and put them both up close next to each other in just a moment. But they are Cyclops and Wolverine. All right. Switch cook spaces again. Okay. Now, if you read after Schism, they did Regenerous, uh, Regenerous, <laughs> Regenesis number one. And there was this like metaphorical caveman esque battle between the two lead characters. And it was during the time that they were trying to form their teams. They were asking people to join them, and you were seeing people take a side, choose a side. Okay, so there's that Wolverine up close, and here's that Cyclops up close. So Cyclops has that bear mask, Wolverine right next to him, just in a loincloth with these bone claws attached to him. So if you read that issue, if you haven't read that issue, go back. You, you start to see how everybody is choosing uh, aside the reasons that they are choosing the side that they are, everyone was really uniquely motivated. And it was like a reset button for the X-Men uh, Marvel continuity and, and run going into the future. Um, it was a really cool jumping on point for a lot of people. And it was something that was so sorely needed, actually, for uh, longtime X-Men fans. Uh, X-Men kind of lost its way. Uh, before that hit and this gave them a clear focus moving forward on what they were in the Marvel Universe uh, What they meant to each other what their characteristics were what their base morals were going to be going forward and What they were going to fight for and how they were going to fight for it and that issue was really cool. Let's look at, look at Wolverine's card first Now X-Men brute and past keywords eternal struggle when Wolverine is hit with a range attack after resolutions you may place him and any unoccupied square adjacent to the attacker. If you do, heal him one click. Modify damage by plus one if targeting a character with a range value greater than zero. Ritual battle, toughness. When Wolverine is hit with an attack, the maximum damage opposing characters can deal to Wolverine is their printed damage value, protected against pulse wave. Wolverine cannot be carried. X-Men, Brute, and past keywords. Take a look at that dial there. That's nasty. I love Eternal Struggle being 
uh, one of those traits, though. I, I, I think Cyclops is probably going to have a variance of that. It's that up-close brawler versus that ranged monster. Cyclops also has X-Men, Brute, and Past, Eternal Struggle. When Cyclops is hit with a close attack, after resolutions, you may place him in any unoccupied square within two squares and line of fire. If you do, heal him one click. Modify damage by plus one of targeting a character with range value of zero. These guys were built to battle each other. It's really cool. It's going to have to be a chess match. Blood must spill. Steal energy, but instead with ranged attacks. So instead of regeneration or steal energy up close, he's getting it at range. It's helping him hang with Wolverine in that way. Ritual battle toughness. When Cyclops is hit with an attack, the maximum damage opposing characters can deal to Cyclops is their printed damage value, protected against pulse wave, just like Wolverine, and Cyclops cannot be carried. You know, it's, it's not a cage match, it's a cave match. Uh, it all took place in a cave and everybody was choosing sides. You know, Iceman went with Cyclops. Psylocke, I mean, sorry, Psylocke went with Cyclops. Iceman went with Wolverine. They kept on asking people to see if they would join them. Beast very quickly joined up the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. And, uh, you know, Hope made her intentions clear to stay on the island and be a soldier. That's what she wanted to be. You know, remember, Hope was, was flying all over time with, with Cable. She learned from a soldier. That, that was her mentality. She wanted to be useful going forward. Um, man, I am excited about this event series. I know this is a longer video to, to, today, guys, but I wanted you to see everything that I had all at once. Uh, split it up, watch it separately, watch it in little chunks if you, if you need to. Uh, I hope that you guys got everything you could possibly want from this unboxing for this event series. I am super excited to choose a side. I'll probably take Cyclops, even though some of my favorite, favorite characters are on the side of Wolverine. That dream team for me, actually, uh, six figures in the field and two support characters would be Storm, Colossus, Iceman, Nightcrawler, Psylocke, Forge and Beast back at the base. And, uh, you know, I would say I would, at this point, probably put Cyclops onto that team. Um, when I was younger, I would have put Havoc on that team, but Cyclops now. So let me know in the comments below, what would be your favorite X team if you had six field members and two support characters? What's your favorite X-Men team? Tell me in the comment section below what side you're going to choose and why. And tell me in the comments below if you enjoyed this unboxing series. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And let us know what we can do better if you didn't. I'm always open to communication and I'll always be chatting with all, uh, mixing it up in the comment section below. Once again, I'm coming to you from Hyper RPG Studios in Studio City, California. Check them out on YouTube and at Twitch. They have amazing gaming content of all types and forms, whether it be board games, card games, video games tabletop games like this. They have a lot of archived Heroclix footage of a show called Indomitable that yours truly was a part of. So go and check that out. I guarantee you will have a good time. I want to say thank you to WizKids for sending me all of this stuff before the event series even starts. And I want to thank you, the fans of Heroclix, for continuing to watch these videos. The, the more you guys watch, the more you guys let us know what you're loving, the more I'll be able to do these videos. And as, as, as a big fan of comics and of Heroclix, it's just an honor to be able to be the guy to do these unboxings for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you next time, but until I do, may all your roles be critical hits.